verse number 210 please read panchanam api koshanam nishede yukti ta srute he tannisha dhavadi sakshi bodarupo vasishyate yoyamatma swayam jyotihi panchakosha vilakshana avastha traya sakshi shanna nirvikaro niranjana sadananda savigneya svatmatvena vipaschita i hope you really read this and thought over it a little because in these two verses what all you have gone through so far is summed up as to who i am and who i am not what is the aham pratyaya gochara meaning of the word i and what is the anatma whereon the i identifies itself with very clearly you can appreciate if you contemplate and see for yourself that all the koshas annamaya your physical body pranamaya all your pranic activities manomaya with your thoughts and sense organs and all the vijnanamaya the i thought and in deep sleep state ignorance by themselves they have no problem like the physical body please see. you must see it clearly because this is something not a speculative philosophy or nobody is asking you to imagine something recognize the nature of everything as it is body annamaya kosha food seat is jada in not innocent physical body by itself does not know anything has no goal of its own not aware of its limitation not afraid of mortality afraid of changes extension of this body the whole creation if you look at it again in the creation no emotion is inherent you cannot search for anger hatred jealousy infatuation pain anxiety anywhere outside again and again i have told you the object of your anger may be outside anger within the object of your hatred jealousy infatuation can be outside your jealousy within all the emotions within even if it is a habit you develop you develop a habit in relation to a cigarette or drinks drugs anything for that matter but that weakness for that object is not outside not is the body your mind that is why it is so important that you clearly recognize the source of the problem because if you recognize the source of the problem it will be easier to find a solution also when you discover that you are the source of the problem you will also be surprised to discover you are the source of the solution the distance between aham and ahankara understand the point the distance between aham and ahankara i 
your sense of being is free ahankara ego i am the body i am the mind where this ahankara means aham karomi the buddhi i do i own the moment you say i am the body suddenly the limitations of the body becomes real for you body has no sense of living or dying but when i say i am the body suddenly i am living i am dying are you getting the peculiarity of it is such a peculiar thing i want it who wants just take that exam take that statement and find out in your life i want to drink coffee who wants it the cup the cup of coffee that the cup wants to hold the coffee does the coffee wants to be drunk does your hand wants to drink your stomach demands coffee tongue demands it i want it who is this i and the coffee is not given who is affected i am insulted i am humiliated i asked for it i never got it uh huh getting that point i i want to you know eat i want to sleep i want to see who wants to see your eyes want to see your ears want to hear your tongue wants to eat are you getting that point please you are pushing your body your sense organs do not have a demand your sense organs do not drive you crazy you drive the sense organs crazy are you getting that point please do you understand that language your sense organs don't drive you crazy you drive them crazy like a car does the tar does the car take you for a spin or you take the car for a spin if a person is going on speeding the car who wanted to enjoy the thrill of the speed definitely not the car wanted to enjoy the driver wants are you getting that body is a vehicle sansargans vehicle thought innocent suggestions i go crazy that is why i must see the meaning of the word i and when you the see that ahankara means or the i identifies itself with the gross body sense organs thoughts everything becomes bound now knows who am i now you see how none of these are source of i annamaya your food seat gross body pranamaya your pranic activities with organs of action mind with sense organs intelligence ahankara with sense organs your ignorance in deep sleep none of them are source of i the source of i is yourself the consciousness which is panchanam kosanam nishedhe when the five sense five kosas are negated one thing left out whatever is left out that is yourself sakshi bodha roopa this is was known as the nishedha vakya and the vidhi nishedha means what all it is not vidhi means what it is that is how the upanishads reveal the truth first it tells you what it is not nishedha neti neti not this not this body not this mind not this thought not this then what is this sakshi bodha roopa swayam jyotihi self luminous these names understand the names attempt to describe one aspect or the other of the truth the name itself is not the truth the name reveals 
Saksi, which witnesses Saksi. Saksat ikshate we sees. Swayam Jyotihi, self-luminous. Panchagosha vilakshana, other than the five gosas. Nirvikara, niranjana, free from modifications, untainted, pure consciousness. So every word you take up and understand, every name points out the nameless absolute that you are. You see that nameless, be that nameless, and enjoy the names and the forms. That is where your living becomes beautiful. So he finishes with that. Sadananda Savigyaya Swatmatvena Vipaschita Vipaschita by the one who is sharp, intellect, discriminatory, discriminative, knows how to contemplate, has to be known as Swatmatvena Savigyaya. The this to be known as one's own self. What is that? Atma Sadananda, the self, the I, eternally blissful. Who is that? Anybody and everybody. In this knowledge, the beauty is you are neither arrogant, proud, or unnecessarily humble. There is no sense of superiority, inferiority. As much you are the Brahman, the Absolute, that much everybody is. When you become an engineer, other person may or may not be. When you are rich, you may invoke poverty in somebody. When you are poor, you may invoke riches in somebody. When you are educated, you can invoke inferiority, superiority in somebody. When you say, I am the Absolute, happiness, truth, there is no sense of inferiority, superiority. No sense of more or less. No sense of limitation of any kind. That is, you don't invoke in anybody a sense of inferiority or superiority. Who you are, who he is, who everything is, is one and the same. That is why they call it Nirdoshami Samam Brahma. Brahma Samam is same, nirdosham, free from every type of limitation. That is where comes your natural, inherent, effortless sense of kindness, compassion, acceptance, tolerance, no sense of unnecessary arrogance or humility, both ways. False humility, as, a, as stupid as the useless arrogance. Understand? False humility also is a very, you know, sort of a put-up thing. You know, people try to be falsely humble, you know, like uh, I've never seen people, very big man, and if you go and tell them, oh, he's such a nice person, today we have invited him, that's why, you know, then suddenly the man, chief guest will get up and say, Friends, whatever they told about me, that is not right. I don't deserve anything. Then get up and get out. Why are you sitting there? Because only if you are not that wonderful, why should they invite you for what? Understand? So false humility is for if you can. If you are a singer, you can sing, you can sing. Can't sing, can't sing. Neither you are arrogant about it or unnecessarily humble about it. Same thing, this knowledge. You are so happy, content with yourself. But you don't consider yourself somebody special or extraordinary. Who you are is who everybody is. And that's why in this knowledge also, there is no sense of superiority, arrogance, because the person who understands the truth, he sees the oneness, even if others don't see it. And there is nothing to be proud of because who I am is what the other person is. And if at this moment the other person is ignorant, where he is, there I was. I was ignorant. Where I am, there he will be. Are you getting that point? If the other person is ignorant, I was ignorant. If I am wise, I understand it, he will understand it. 
Where he is, there I was. Where I am, there he will be. So what is so special? Why are you unnecessarily arrogant? Are you getting that point, please? The sense of superiority goes away. Inferiority also goes away. He's such a person, you know that, you know, it's like a, always on the x-axis. You are so calm and beautiful. But you can, if you are calm and beautiful, you can pretend to be very disturbed and restless also. Thereafter, the freedom, so much freedom is yours that nobody can even comprehend it. You know, when you are a rich person, you can pretend to be poor, no? Confident within. You can pretend to be poor. When a rich man pretends to be poor, everybody is comfortable. He also is comfortable. Pretending, no? Because he knows he is rich, he is pretending to be poor. When a poor man pretends to be rich, or manga jata hai. It becomes a little more expensive. If a poor man pretends to be rich, <laughs> already losing. When a rich man pretends to be poor, comfortable. Wise man pretending to be ignorant, easy. Ignorant man, <laughs> he understands. Ignorant man pretends to be wise, oh boy. <laughs> that is where suddenly the reality comes up. Very nice, very nice for some time until he explodes. Ooh. Then suddenly you discover, oh, oh, there is so much of anger, hatred, jealousy inside, so much under the spell of mood. Oh my God, I didn't know that. Ah. Then everybody watches out. Why? Just like, please see why people don't believe you. Listen carefully. Why people don't believe you? Just like the example you have seen in Vivek Chudamani. There is a puddle of water. There is green moss. You thought it is a nice lawn. You put your leg. Suddenly your foot goes into water. You withdraw it quickly. But do you forget the water? Even if it covers it up with lawn again, eh, that green moss, do you forget the water? You do not. When you interact with people, Somebody who is pretending to be very nice, looks innocently green. Then suddenly you discover the real red. Where the fellow is so angry, so moody. You don't forget that part of it. That is why even when you attempt to be nice, one nasty mood that you have created usually is not forgotten. That is why people don't believe you. And you don't believe yourself also. If you want people to believe in you, first thing you must do it, you must learn to believe in yourself. Don't say nobody believes me. Do you believe in yourself? If I see contradictory appearances, how can I believe you? Now you are nice, now you are exploding. How can I believe you? You don't believe yourself. What do you say? I, mean, I can't rely on my mind, you know. It's like a car. Now running, now stopping. Can you rely on that vehicle? A gas supply. Now they are giving you, now they are not giving you. What do you say? Erratic supply, you know. You can't rely on the electricity in India, you know. Because now it is on, now it is off. Same thing you can rely on the person. Because now angry, now nice. A person with moods cannot be relied upon. You want Everybody to rely on you, you better have full reliance on yourself. Complete. You have no moods. And if you choose to have moods, at no time, you lose sight of yourself. Then you can be rich, pretend to be poor. Wise, pretend to be ignorant. No problem. Other way around is very difficult. It becomes very tough. Okay. So observe and see this. Sadhananda Savigya. Always to know that this is Sadhananda eternally blissful. By whom? Swatmatvena Vipaschita. One who is sharp in his mind and intellect, busy and sort of contemplative, he recognizes that oneness with himself, other than the avastayatra shakshi sanne, witness of three or different conditions, five causes, and eternally shakshi, 
and the last word was bodharupa the witness and eternally pure consciousness having told this with this he stops and the teacher is stops na ha he breathes finished now is over now the student comes with a question what is the question did shishya vache मिथ्यान निषिधेशु कोशेशु पंचसु सर्वाभाव विना किंचि न पश्या हे गुरो विज्ञेय किमुस्वस्ती स्वात्मनात्मचिता श्रीगुरुवाच सत्यमुक्या विद्वान्पुणसी विचारेण चरण अहमादी विकारास्ते तदभावोयप्यनु सर्वेनाभूयते यूयते तस्तमात्मा व्यदीता विधि बुद्धिया सुसूक्ष्मूटिफुल ना द स्टूडेंट आस्क ए वेरी नाइस क्वेश्चन हि गोज टू कंटेम्पलेट understand he goes to contemplate because the teacher says very clearly who you are avastha traya shakshi witness of three different states panchakosha vilakshanam adadandi panchakosha shakshi rupa bodha rupa pure witness consciousness that you are sadananda sabigneya nirvikar niranjana free from modifications untainted eternally blissful now the student contemplates okay all these things i am not you ask a very beautiful question mithyatvena nishiddheshu eteshu panchashu kosheshu he guru sarva abhavam sarva abhavam bina न किंचित पश्य वेन आई नेगेट लिशन कर वेन आई नेगेट फाइव सेंसर आई मीन द फाइव कोसाज अवस्था त्रस ऑल दीज थिंग्स आई नेगेट सडनली आई डोंट सी एनीथिंग दे सर्व अभाव देर इज टोटल सीम्स टू बी टोटल एम्टीनेस this question is raised just to remove this idea that atma yourself is shunyam emptiness because some people believe that it is shunyam emptiness there is nothing that's a very tricky statement that you are nothing it is not non existence that is talked about when you remove everything suddenly the person says but there is nothing watch out to say there is nothing there must be something to say it can the nothing be seen by itself are you getting their point that is a when you say shunyam it is complete emptiness you should not name it as the listen carefully you should not when you say emptiness should not equate with non existence so are you getting that shunyam does not mean non existence shunyam also is purnam in upanishadic language purnatvam shunyatvam emptiness and fullness are used in same way there is a beautiful language shankara says at one point 
Antahpurna, he gives the example, how is this self the awareness? Antahpurnam, bahipurnam, purna kumbha ivam, ivarnave. Antasunyam, bahisunyam, sunya kumbha ivam, bare. How is this self, yourself? It is like antahpurnam, full inside, bahipurnam, full outside, Purna kumbhaivar nave, like the full pot in the ocean. In the ocean, when you put a pot inside, the water is full inside. The water is full outside. And Purna kumbha, the full pot in the ocean. Same thing also, antasunyam, bahisunyam, inside emptiness. Outside emptiness, empty pot in the space, in the empty space. The space is empty, all pervasive. When you hold a pot in the space, inside is empty, outside is empty. Empty pot in the empty space. So the empty pot is full of emptiness. Are you getting that? So, that emptiness also is a fullness. Are you getting that? That's a very beautiful language. Emptiness also is fullness. Because full of emptiness. Full of emptiness. So, emptiness and fullness are the two different things. Both one and the same. It's full of emptiness. So, it's not non-existence. Same thing also in case of the Atma. In case of yourself. When a, the person says, when I am contemplating, negating everything, just be careful. This is beautiful contemplation. When I negate everything, I don't see anything. This is where you make the mistake of continuing as a contemplator. When, listen, or what's the language? When I negate Gross body, subtle body, causal body. When I negate pancha gosha, annamaya, pranamaya, manomaya, vijnanamaya, anandamaya, then you say, I don't see anything. To understand yourself, you must negate the I itself. But now the I is sitting down and negating everything. Are you getting that how smart, how subtle it is? Are you getting that point, please? When you are contemplating, Ahankar, the I thought itself also has to, it's also in the realm of negated. Are you getting that point? Even the I thought itself also, but so subtle it is, it is unconsciously surviving. That is where the I in the name of contemplation, sit down as a contemplator. In the name of eliminating everything, remains as the eliminator. In the name of dismissing everything, sits down as the dismisser. The one, if you can use the word dismisser, right? And in, when you are going to understand it, you don't worry about the language. Does it convey? In a monastery, there are four disciples. The teacher had asked them that you must be keeping quiet for the whole day and you are not supposed to talk. So these people, in the morning they got up, finished their work, closed the temple door and stay inside to be quiet for the whole day. And that is the time, as you know, some people get their inspiration when you are ready to switch off for the whole day. One, some visitors came and they knocked the door. Knock, knock, knock. One of the four could not keep quiet, got up, opened the door and tell them, look, we are not supposed to talk today. Please come tomorrow. He goes back. The second man talks to him. You fellow cannot keep quiet. Do you have to get up? 
The third fellow says, Why both of you, two of you are so restless? Why are you talking? And the fourth one said, I am the only one who has not spoken. <laughs> are you getting that? The moment you say, I am the only one who has not spoken, what does it mean? You have spoken. I am not there. When every thought is gone, I am not there. Who is talking? Are you getting that point, please? You know, unconsciously it comes up. It's so subtle. A Jain story goes, very interesting Jain, Jain story. When the, the student comes and tells, to, wants to show off his wisdom, and the teacher listens to it. He says, shut up, you shut up. Just be dead. Don't talk about it. Just be dead. The next day the teacher is walking down. And near the meditation place, this boy is lying down. Completely dead. You know, totally as the dead. Then the teacher as usual with a stick in his hand. No, Jain master they say with a stick in the hand. Touches him and says, what are you doing here? He says, I am dead. Then he hit his head and said, dead men don't talk. Walked away. And he got the knowledge. If you are acting dead, do the dead men talk? If you are really understanding, who are you? What should you talk? If you are a successful contemplation, when you see the truth, nothing to talk, no thought is needed. But by habit, when the eye is now contemplating, it has assumed the role of a contemplator. This is gone, this is gone, this is gone. Now the eye is wandering, but there is nothing to see. This by habit, are you getting that? By habit, you think it is an experience to be experienced. That is why people look for light. Red light, white light, blue light, some exotic experience, some shivering, some, you know, something, something extraordinary. When you look for it, your mind is capable of throwing it. <laughs> that is how you get deceived by all these experiences. So one who looks for it, and then he says what? I don't see anything. The teacher says, to say, I don't see anything, you must see to say that you don't see anything, right or wrong? Huh? What is in my hand? Please see this. Watch out. It's a beautiful area. What is in my hand? Huh? Flower. I take out this thing. What is in my hand? Nothing. Did you see the flower? You see the flower, the something. You also see the nothing. When you see nothing, do you still exist or not? Or only when you see the flower you see, and when you don't see anything, there is nothing. Huh? You see nothingness, but to see nothingness, you must be there, no? <laughs> Do you understand that? As I told you, it is so subtle because while looking at this flower, do you see this flower? Do you see? Do you remember your eyes? While seeing the flower itself, you don't remember your eyes. When there is nothing to see, you are worried, you are not seeing anything. Are you not seeing anything? You are being the eyes. 
You understand that language of what I am talking? You don't see anything. But you are being the eyes or no? Oh. As even eyes to the object, consciousness to the thought of the object. Eyes can see the object. Eyes cannot see the thought of the object. To see the thought of the object, you need the eye of the eyes. Consciousness. As even eyes to the object, while looking at the object, you don't remember your eyes. While being conscious of the thought, you are not conscious of consciousness. How long does it take to remember your eyes while seeing the object? Instantaneous. How long does it take to be yourself while watching the thought? When the thought is, what are you seeing? Thought. When all thoughts are cancelled, negated, what are you seeing? Nothing. In the nothingness is your being. In that emptiness you see the fullness. That is why when a teacher says, student says, Hey Guru, Atrana Kinchit Pashyami. When I when you ask me to negate everything, Sarvanishiddeshu, I don't see anything. Kimuatra Vigyam, what is that to be known? Atmana Vipaschita. By the contemplative, sharp contemplative mind, discriminative mind, what is there to be seen? Where there is nothing. Teacher says, Satya Muktam Toya Vidwan, Nipuno Si Vicharena. The teacher doesn't say, A dud. What are you talking? Nonsense. No. What he says? He Vidwan. Toya samyak uktam satya muktam toya. You have told the right thing. Nipunosi vicharena. You are really very dexterous in enquiry. Vicharane nipunosi. You are very dexterous in enquiry, investigation, in contemplation. Ahamadi vikaranste. Tad abhavam api anu. Ahamadi vikaraste. All that you are seeing, ahamadi vikara. What you see is the, what all you see inside is I thought and all its modifications. Please see first. That is where you have to observe, you know. Can I observe your mind for you? You understand? That is why however wise the teacher may be, unless the student sees, they will remain otherwise. Because you have to see. It's just, only in Upanishad's teaching, you know, in every subject, if you don't see what your physics teacher sees, you are not going to be a physicist. If you don't see what your mathematics teacher sees, you can't be a mathematician. If you don't see what the teacher, your musician, music teacher sees, you cannot be a musician. You have to see it for yourself. So you observe your mind. Every thought, including I thought, aham adi, beginning with I, every other thought, vikara, modifications inside. Thoughts are coming up, I thought also is coming up. And this I thought owns up everything. When thoughts are not existing, listen, when the thoughts are not existing, the I come up and says, there is nothing. Who comments? Consciousness comments or I comments? Who says it is so silent? Silence speaks or the listener? 
Who speaks? The silence never speaks. The listener speaks. Consciousness doesn't speak. One who considers himself conscious, I thought. There is nothing. Your understanding requires that you are not interested in what you are conscious of, but that in whose presence you are conscious of. In meditation, it is not what you see, but it is who you are. Are you getting that point, please? Meditation is not what you see, what you are conscious of, but who you are, the consciousness. So that's what he says. So, Sarvam, now he gives you the pointer. Sarvam yena anubhuyate. He, remember. Yena sarvam anubhuyate. That by whom everything is experienced. Yes, swayam na anubhuyate. That by itself cannot be experienced. Which experiences everything. Itself cannot be experienced. Tamatmanam veditaram. Understand that the knower, the ultimate knower, as yourself, with his sukshmya buddhya, with the very subtle mind. Please, this line you must remember. Eh? I have, I think long back, I had explained to you how Atma, yourself, Anubhava Swarupa Atvat. It is the nature of experience. It's the nature of experience. You don't have to experience it. Like I'll give an example again. Please appreciate. See it now. Please observe. Look at this. Please see that. Do you see this flower? Huh? You are seeing the flower, right? Now, I take out the flower. Do you see the flower? No. Seeing when the flower is there, you are seeing the flower. When the flower goes away, only the flower goes away. Does the seeing disappear? Seeing continues. Are you getting that point, please? Do you understand? Seeing the flower. When the flower is gone, seeing continues. I bring this. Now what happened? Seeing the book. Now the book goes. Seeing continues, disappears, goes away. Seeing continues. Right? Listen. When you say you are seeing, you are conscious of, listen, when you say seeing the flower, you are conscious of the eyes seeing the flower. Are you getting that point, please? When you say you are seeing the flower, am I talking sense or nonsense? Do you understand? Conscious of eyes seeing the flower. Flower gone, you are conscious of eyes seeing nothing. If you close your eyes, you are conscious of eyes not seeing. Are you unconscious? When eyes seeing, you are conscious. When eyes are not seeing, are you conscious or unconscious? Huh? 
still conscious right now shift your attention to your ears do you hear what i say you are conscious of hearing now close your ears can you hear cannot consciousness gone no now shift your attention to your touch you touch your body are you conscious of touching your body yes now don't touch are you conscious of not touching yes now listen when you are conscious a perception through eyes we say you are experiencing sight when you are conscious of sounds through your ear you are experiencing the sound when experiencing the touches through your skin you are experiencing the touch when the touch stops sight stops sound goes eyes closed ear stopped skin at a distance do you stop experiencing that is what yourself effortless experiencing never disturbed stops are you getting that point please so call it being call it consciousness call it atma call it chetana are you getting that you cannot stop experiencing yourself why anubhava swarupatvat it is of the nature of anubhava are you getting that point please that is why is easier difficult <laughs> that word doesn't exist it is the easiest your being what is difficult is seeing is very difficult because suppose you want to see the flower chances are it is out of season chances are you have conjunctivitis your eyes can go crazy but can you be unconscious why season has not come only spring season consciousness is very sharp the season wait wait neither you depend on the condition of your eyes you understand the beauty and the simplicity of this wisdom yena sarva anubhuyate that by which everything is experienced but nothing experiences it did you get the example what i gave ha huh? work on it by yourself sit down and play the game are you saying oh my god so difficult so many thoughts are coming are that which in whose presence all thoughts are experienced does it matter what thoughts you are experiencing ha huh? no only if these thoughts are gone only if these thoughts are negated what is it necessary to remove the waves to see the water i must remove the water then only i can see the wave can you see the gold in this uh, chain no you must remove the chain then only i can see the gold are you nuts the gold is where the chain is and in the gold there is no chain <laughs> the water is where the wave is in the water there is no wave it is only water 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 then choose to see the wave for fun in and through every experience you are in you nothing else existing sakshi anubhava swarup okay so he says yasmatam atmanam vidaram vidhi susukshmaya buddhya by the very very subtle intellect why because if your mind is little stupid stupid means what you know which has got wrong concepts inside suppose somebody has been fed with this idea very very difficult the most difficult part of this knowledge is the idea that it is difficult <laughs> and when people have made it a conditional wisdom conditional so many conditions to be fulfilled for the knowledge to take place what unconditioned 
That is why sukshma buddhi, sharp, subtle intellect. What is told in the beginning, Shankara said, Vapoha vichakshana, as sharp as the razor's edge. Very sharp. You want to listen to the story? Oh, not. You are not interested. Okay. All right. I must tell. There was a um, very miserly fellow. Huh? Very miserly fellow. Uh, uh, tight. Every, uh, mine is mine. Yours also mine. You know. Very. Nice. Some people are like that. Very nice. Mine is mine. Yours also is mine. But mine is never anybody's. You know. Such a fellow. Begging, begging, begging. And what all he begs, he converts it to small little gold pieces. In time, he is living inside a hut, but he has collected a hundred gold sovereigns. But he is living inside a hut. Very miserly fellow. One day it so happened, the hut is on fire. He has kept it doing there. Now he doesn't want to leave the Ottoman don't go away. Because afraid somebody else may take it away. So he's standing there and crying. This is the time one man was passing that way. And he said, Hey, what are you standing here for? Get out! You can build this hut anywhere you like. What are you standing in the hut for? Then he tells him, I'm not standing for my hut. Then what are you standing for? I have some money inside. Then take it and go. He said, I can't get in dig it. He said, what is there? How much you have got? And there's some gold. One, huh? One or two? No, 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 no. Hundred. He said, okay, stupid fellow. I'll go and get it. How many you'll give me? One. If you get for me, I'll give you one. He said, are you crazy? Shall I risk my life for that? Okay, two. Then he said, no. He said, stupid fools, quickly say, or else it will all melt. Okay, I will give you whatever I like. I'm going to get it, but I'll give you whatever you like. What the poor thing now the... In a beggar and no brain. And what he knows also, by chance the fellow doesn't bring, the whole thing will be finished. So he said, okay. He agreed. And the man brought it out. Then he says, what do you want? He said, okay, you take whatever and give it to me. He said, I told you, I'll give you whatever I like. Gold is mine, pot is yours. You knew you have collected it. It's not yours. <laughs> but the pot is yours. So you take this pot, beg a little more. And the fellow started hollering, <laughs> shouting, crying, miserable. Then some people joined up with now both have started fighting. Everybody said, what happened? Now everybody came to know this man has got it. So he doesn't want to lose his hundred gold. And he knows he's being cheated. So they go and they reach Birbal. Now Birbal hears the case. And this fellow says, Birbal asks, Did you, did he tell you that he shall give you whatever he likes? He said, Yes, Maharaj. So, he said, Yes, I told him I will take whatever he likes. I never thought he'll cheat me. I thought he'll take some and give me. But he's not taking away everything. And Birbal knew this business, this man is trying to be too smart. So he said, All right, tell me, what did you exactly tell him? He said, I told him, whatever I like, I'll give it to him. Did he say that? He said, yes. He said, okay. Tell me, sir. Be honest. Tell me. Do you, you said, whatever you like, you'll give me. Do you like the pot or do you like gold? <laughs> you see the smartness? This is known as the subtle intellect. Do you like the, you said, whatever you like, you will give him. So, do you like the pot or you like the gold? <laughs> now, what can the man say? You know, now he's caught. He said, of course I like the gold. Then give it to the man and go. And he was forced to give it. This is subtle. Same words you use. Now, sunyam, emptiness. How? It is not emptiness, non-existence. It is fullness. Anubhava Surupati. 
please understand to experience a sound touch taste sight smell you have to go places in time in space to experience yourself which is the nature of experience itself you don't have to travel in time and place wherever you are there it is here and now you don't travel distance for it somebody talks to you about himalayas you travel 1000 miles to reach himalayas experience the sound of the victoria falls travel to africa you want to experience the fragrance of a particular flower go there where the flower is you want a particular food go there the food is available to experience yourself where should you go which country or continent which mountains or jungle you are already there with yourself close your eyes please think over it contemplate on this side your eyes open you see something and that something is not there seeing continues when you are seeing something you are conscious of seeing something when that something is gone you are conscious of seeing nothing when you close your eyes you are conscious of not seeing when your eyes open you are conscious of seeing when your eyes closed you are conscious of not seeing when you are not seeing you are not unconscious you are always conscious i of the eyes with eyes open or closed you are conscious with eyes seeing or not seeing presence or absence of the object you are conscious in every perception you are consciousness that seeing if is an experiencing and the seeing stops experiencing continues name it chetana anubhav experience or consciousness one and the same same in sight sound touch taste and smell you are a fruitless being silence awareness